Greetings gamers, Stone Monk here, repping the Mortar Realms crew. I've been asked a number of times to show more of my undead army um, and uh, kind of the, the ideas and the concepts behind it. And uh, so I'm starting a little series. Uh, and instead of kind of showing everything all at once in one video, I'm going to do some breaking it down into different chunks. Um, now, uh, one thing to know about my army is everything, generally everything, uh, is some sort of uh, version of an undead version of a unit from another faction in Age of Sigmar, uh, with some extension exceptions of you know, the skeletons and the zombies uh, being kind of just the availability is mostly human. Um, but this is, uh, you'll see kind of how I got around that with this particular army with this centerpiece here. Um, so I'm starting this with uh, the meat train which is my Deadwalkers uh, faction. And so I'm going to kind of walk you through uh, the four different units that are in the Deadwalkers, um, how, some, some things about how they came to be, um, and uh, little tidbits here and there. Uh, and that'll be the sum of this video. So first and foremost, uh, the centerpiece, uh, something that came uh, really kind of came together right uh, before Adepticon, and I wanted to bring a corpse cart. Um, because as you'll see a little bit later, I, I love my dire wolves and I wanted them in the army. They're a great uh, unit and, and they're even better when they're backed up by a corpse cart. Well, I'd already kind of chopped up my corpse cart and tried to use it for something else. Um, and uh, uh, so what I wanted to do was do something like something that represented the corpse cart, had all the WYSIWYG of the corpse cart. Um, but this idea of this corpse golem came to mind. The idea that this... Um, all these corpses are kind of melded together and fused together, but they can be separated. Um, and that the, the necromancer who controls them is able to kind of hold them together uh, and, uh, you know, and then, you know, dole it out, dole those energies out and, and you know, use the pieces from this guy to, um, to heal and to um, resurrect and to bring back uh, or re-strengthen some of those uh, zombie units or the direwolf units, etc. Um, and uh, so this is uh, just was a really fantastic project, fun to do, and challenged very much uh, my conversions, adding things on to a thing. Seems like it could be easy, but to strike the right balance and to find the right kind of way of doing it that uh, um, is going to still feel like it's all part of the same model and connected and and that sort of thing. So um, the basic elements of this guy is actually more than I expected. Uh, it starts with a base core graph. Um, I'm using a, a giant uh, hand up there on the on the right with the the pike coming out of it. Um, there's a, a troll hand down here in the in his right arm with the exposed meat, and I um, I use the bone giant, one of the bone giant heads from the old Tomb King stuff. Just never found a way for this to fit in, uh, but for some reason these two skeletons on top seem like they're cobbled together enough that uh, I could get away with it. Plus, I wanted him to, his head to have some more height uh, compared to the other things I was putting on the model, like this zombie off to the left. Um, there are corpse cart bits. You can see the tire, this wheel that's embedded in his leg. That is, you know, the meat has just formed around it as as he's kind of walked through and picked things up and you know these other things and and uh, there's even some chaos spawn bits with the with that wing in the back and uh one of the things that um i'm not a big video game player but there's this video game that always caught my eye and it's called uh katamari uh de Macy. and so uh, it's this idea this ball of things that just starts snowballing and picking up everything else and as it gets bigger it can pick up bigger things like it starts picking up houses and fences and and buildings and etc um uh, and so this is the same kind of thing he just kind of roams about and and grabs things and they become part of them uh so, so this is the the corpse golem uh, known as corpse amari de Macy. Um, and then, you know, just to kind of, uh, in addition to that, some of the things that I sculpted, um, the, this exposed mus muscle in the front, uh, on that right arm, uh, I did some sculpting there, which I was pretty proud of. And then, uh, on the back, uh, the shoulder of, uh, this giant arm, um, uh, to, to kind of mold it in. And, uh, you know, what was nice though, is I kind of created these lines between, um, chunks, those red lines that would kind of separate muscle and separate body parts and stuff to kind of help sell that idea that they're 
fused from different things. Um, but it was kind of cool to be able to to add that and, and try that in this army. So, but big centerpiece, everybody you know who sees him loves to pick him up and take a look. And uh, I really enjoy that about him. Now the leader of this uh, ragtag uh, neat train is Kron, the corpse conductor. Uh, and I had this guy, uh, the idea for this guy at the uh, really tail end of 8th edition, um, but to kind of take an ogre and turn him into a necromancer. Uh, ogres love to eat anything, and they can eat dead things, they can eat live things or whatever. And so this particular ogre has got a real taste for dead rancid meat. And uh, and so much so that he learned uh, necrogastronomic uh, <laughs> gastronomic, uh, magics and uh, is able to kind of make meat come to him. Uh, and uh, you've got a couple of, you know, some tattooing that, that really kind of shows that he's into the, the dead things. You've got these skulls all around. And uh, what, ogres are always a little bit humorous. And so I made, since he's uh, he uses gastronomic, uh, I might be saying that wrong, um, uh, magics, it, it's using, he eats it, and it's got to go through his digestive system and come out somewhere in order for him to use that magic. And so the spirit host is uh, a bit of a, a fart, um, uh, you know. And I, I always chuckle at it. I think it's hilarious. Um, the art, this started off as a, um, uh, I don't know, butcher. Um, it's a fine cast model. Uh, the arms are down, and he's kind of got an apron on. I shaved off the apron. Um, uh, I used some, some ogre bits. The claws are from the crypt horrors, and then obviously the spirit host. Um, and then uh, I shaved the chest of the apron and sculpted that, and I re-sculpted the musculature of the arms, so that would be uh, up and above, and had to, to do some repair work then on the back muscles as well. So this is one of the first models that I tried sculpting large sections. And I, I don't love all of it, but I, it, it fits what I need it to, to fit. Um, these leg pieces are, these feet are from another model somewhere, and I just picked them up in a bits uh, bag. So, but they seemed, I feel like a necromancer's not going to care about wearing boots and all that kind of stuff. Um, so Kron uh, definitely heals up those those zombies. He heals up, uh, sticks around with that, um, with that uh, corpse cart, with the corpse golem, uh, which grants him plus one to his magic casting. So that's why he likes to keep that thing around. One of my favorite units in uh, the Dire uh, or in the Dead Walkers is my Dire Griffhounds, the Insatiable Pack, um, and uh, this was another kind of right before uh, Holy Havoc in last fall. I wanted to add some Dire Wolves because they were a great uh, unit for the Soulblight army that I was building, um, but I have this bird theme. I have this uh, you know feathers theme, uh, and I loved I liked the Dire Wolf models a lot, but those heads were janky. Uh, and wanted to find something, and I managed to source the the bird heads from the uh, new skull pack, and I got them, and I thought they were going to be perfect, and they ended up being smaller than I expected them to be. I thought they were going to be about the same size as the dire wolf heads, but they were smaller. But when I put them on there, it actually seemed to work quite a well, um, in both in proportion to um, Proportion to like the dire wolves, or sorry, the griffhounds that they are emulating, um, but also, um, sorry about that. Also creating a different proportion for the body, um, because those heads become so small, that neck, that that mane, uh, becomes very feathery, very bird and eagle like, and then that body becomes it feels even more muscular because that head is smaller. Um, and I had a lot of fun painting these. I really enjoy this model. I've got 10 of these painted, um, and I would love to do, you know, 10 more. Um, at the same time, I tend to like it to have like one of each, one unit of each, um, thing that I'm converting, and this feels about right. Uh, so I don't know if I'll end up doing more, but, but I liked it, you know? Um, so, uh, I really enjoyed this, this unit. Um, basics, yeah, it's like I said, the basic sculpt. Uh, the sculpting was just the, the underneath the um, underneath the the skull, kind of getting extra fur in there, and, and where I'd cut out the uh, direwolf head, this leather on the around their necks that held on their kind of chest armor plate, uh, sculpted that on, which was very easy, just taking a little worm of of green stuff and then using a tool to flatten it all along the way. 
um, and then uh, painted it to, to look all rough and, and that sort of thing. So, um, And then uh, uh, last but certainly not least, uh, the vacuous horde uh, of zombies. Now, this is one of those where I wanted some zombies and I got some cheap, you know, mantic... Um, these are mantic zombies. Uh, they're definitely better than the GW ones. However, as I've been doing, you know, more converting and that sort of thing, I would love to find a different kind of unit to turn into zombies. Um, I would love to take either elves or, you know, something like that and uh, turn them into a zombie type unit. Um, I don't know if I'll end up doing that. The zombies aren't, aren't my favorite unit to play. They don't have a ton of flavor to them. Um, and uh, you need to get to pretty big size units to make them effective. But the new gravesite rule makes them very mobile, um, etc. So um, uh, what I did like about this unit and what it kind of did for my army is it introduced this um, blue wash um, using this inside, you know, in between things to make it kind of look like it's separated and, and down in those recesses, and I used that later then in the golem. And I want to go back to my um, direwolves and maybe incorporate this um, this blue tone into their into their flesh to make that look more dead and um, you know void of of blood. Um, and so uh, I you know I really liked that about these guys, and uh, I, I have really enjoyed putting all these units on these on the table. And in my uh, Adepticon games, all four of these units were on the table. And did exactly what I wanted them to do, um, you know, various reasons. The, um, you know, the the necromancer was doing Van Hell's and Mystic Shield. Uh, the corpse cart was giving the dire wolves plus one to their save and giving the um, the necromancer plus one to cast. And uh, the dire wolves were being this amazing shield wall, uh, meat shield. And then the zombies did a great job at, at getting them in spots and holding objectives and making the my opponent not want to deal with them in any way um so um yeah uh so that is the meat train uh my dead walkers uh war band or faction uh for my undead um i'll uh, be sharing my uh, soul blight i'll be sharing my my death rattle and uh, everything else that i have uh completed as i get the photos taken as i get those uh put together so uh, thanks for watching. I hope that uh, uh, you will uh, like this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of these guys. Uh, and uh, keep watching me on Twitter at StoneMonkGamer if you want to see kind of my developments in real time as I come out with new models and uh, post new armies. So uh, thanks again.